Welcome to Ground Control RC in the Pilot's Lounge. The first thing I want to talk about is our Patreon site. And I don't know how many of you are aware of our Patreon site, but we put about 25% of our media up on our Patreon site. And about half of the media that we have on the Patreon site is freely viewable. You don't have to be a patron in order to view at least half of the media that we put up there. And the media is pretty good. You know, when we do, uh, when we do a review of an aircraft and we, we usually do the initial review, we put it up on YouTube, we do the initial flight, the maiden flight on YouTube. But uh, the maiden flight is usually not the most interesting of flights. You know, the maiden flight is where we're, we're just checking the aircraft out, making sure there's nothing, you know, a mess with it, that everything functions correctly, we're not doing anything dramatic with it on the maiden flight, we just want to make sure we can get it in the air, that it flies the way it's supposed to, and, and make a successful landing with it. So the second uh, flight is normally put up on our Patreon site, and it's normally freely viewable, and the second flight is usually a more interesting flight than the maiden. So if you guys haven't checked out our Patreon site, you ought to check it out. Well, like I said, half of the media is really viewable. We've been doing a lot of dust-off flights lately. I've got a lot of aircraft that are just collecting dust that I haven't flown in a long time. And so we've started pulling those out, taking them out and flying them, and those are our dust-off flights. So we're also going to be doing some dust-off flights this month of the Z-84, the Zeta Technology Wing. It's a pretty nice wing, pretty fast, very ac acrobatic. The Volantex uh, Super Cup. We're going to take it out, and this is going to be our first test flight with the Volantex Super Cup since we have the issue with the with the elevator retaining clip. The re there's a plastic retaining clip that holds both sides of the control surfaces for the elevator together, and that delaminated on the last time I took it out to fly. So um, this will be the first test flight after that repair, and we pulled out our little Mac Free. F-22 Nano Smart Plane, and we did a compilation of flights with that, and so we're going to be posting that shortly as well. I know there's a lot of interest in that little tiny plane. Uh, we've received a Racer Star 1306 4000 kV motor. We're going to be testing it, and we're going to compare it side by side with the Racer Star 1306 3100 kV motor, which you know if, if you've watched our um, motor upgrade tutorial and our flights with the XKA430 stunt plane. We use the Racer Star 1306 3100 KV motor in that in that um, in that upgrade motor and prop, and and that turned out to be a, an extremely good upgrade. So hopefully we'll get a, more, a little more thrust with as high efficiency out of the Racer Star 4000 KV motor as we did the 3100. And also, we also use the Racer Star 3100 KV 1306 motor in our brushless conversion on our WL Toys F949 Cessna 182. I just, those 1306 motors are great. Um, we're gonna be doing, oh, also on this, um, on this Cessna 182 brushless conversion, we, we use specific micro servos and a low voltage micro receiver for this brushless conversion. And you should, we already have a video out um, demonstrating the, uh, the low voltage micro receiver, but I wanna talk a little bit about these micro servos, these low voltage micro servos and the types of connectors that they come with because that is very important information and you'll find out why. So keep an eye out for that. The Volantex Mini Train Star. All right, let me pull that up here. There's the Volantex Mini Train Star. I think this is the best trainer plane I've found yet. I think that the, the WL Toy Cessna 182 is a close second. Um, there's the 1306 4000 kV motor we're going to be testing. But on the Volantex Mini Train Star, um, a while back I did a review of a brushless motor gearbox and prop combination, which put out about 50 grams of thrust on a one cell LiPo. We're gonna be testing that motor in this Volantex Mini Train Star because the motor, the, the stock motor that came with it 
uh, the gears are all stripped out on the on the gearbox. So I'm going to re be replacing the stock motor with that, and hopefully that'll be a bit of an upgrade. But um, I believe that is a eight millimeter by twenty millimeter motor, an eight twenty motor. Uh, I got the prop balanced; it runs very smoothly. So we're going to be we're going to be installing this motor in the Voltex Mini Train Star. Hopefully, it will be a good motor replacement for the stock motor. It's only a, a four dollar motor gearbox and prop combination, so it's a it's a pretty inexpensive alternative for the stock motor if that turns out to be successful. Uh, and we'll be doing the field test of that uh, this month, probably in the next week. If that turns out to be a successful motor replacement or upgrade, then we will provide a tutorial on doing that. So look for that. And then if you've noticed, we have the, we have the Flybear FX820 SU35 Micro 2-channel brushed motor uh, micro park jet. And we've done some test flights with this plane. We did a review on it. We've done some test flights. And then I went back and performed some more test flights to check different nose weights because this plane's tail heavy. So I, I tested it with different nose weights out in the field, ran a couple of flights with different, different weights on the nose until I found the sweet spot. So you guys are going to want to check that out. I think I've got this plane. When you watch this plane fly from the test that, that we performed on this and, and you watch it fly and how much easier it is to fly and, and uh, adjust throttle management for flying this plane, you'll see that it looks a lot more like a three-channel airplane flying than a two-channel plane. So watch for that. All right, that's all the news and updates. Oh, a couple other things. With the Cessna 182, the F949 from WL Toys, we'll be posting a a step by step, not a step by step tutorial, but we'll explain all the steps that we took in making the the last significant modification that we made, which was the main wing modification and the manual flaps. Um, if you're interested in in modifying this plane, um, we'll have a good detailed explanation of everything we did to perform that modification and then we'll also put together another detailed uh, discussion tutorial on how we perform the brushless conversion of this plane with links to all the components that we used so so look for that because if you're looking for if you're looking for an excellent little micro brushless plane um, this is an excellent way to go I mean this is a fantastic flying plane now with this brushless conversion and with the modifications that we made to it and I think this plane the way this plane performs um, performing the brushless conversion and the modifications that we made to it I don't think that you could buy a plane with these modifications for, for what it costs us to do it ourselves so so there you go uh, please give a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe don't forget to check out the Patreon site and take a look at all the media that we have on there that's freely viewable. Um, if, you, if you like our channel and you would like to support us, please become a patron. And uh, I will see you in the air.